If you do not have a health savings account or HSA, I'm going to show you why this could be the single greatest account us regular people can own to help us feel like we're getting all of the tricks that the rich use to pay less in taxes. If you do have an HSA, I'm gonna show you four hacks that will basically put your HSA on steroids and turn it into your favorite account. As the name implies, a health savings account is a special savings account for your health care expenses. To have an HSA, you must be covered by a qualified high deductible health plan. This is your health insurance. If you're on a company plan and you aren't sure, you can always check with your HR team and they will be able to tell you. Or if you're on a marketplace plan, look for QHDHP or HDHP. So if you have an HSA and you want to use it as a savings account, that's fine, but you are missing out on some insane benefits if you just leave that money sitting in there. That's because an HSA is a triple tax advantaged account. Let me rephrase. An HSA is one of the only triple tax advantage accounts that you and I can have. And here's what that means. Tax advantage number one, any money that you put into an HSA is not taxed and those dollars you contribute lower your taxable income. If you make $100,000 a year, but you put $5,000 into an HSA, when you do your taxes, you only show $95,000 as income. So HSA contributions reduce your taxable income. Tax advantage number two, any money that you pull out of an HSA and use for qualified medical expenses is not taxed. So you aren't taxed on the money going in, you aren't taxed on the money going out. But this third tax advantage is by far the most powerful. Tax advantage number three is that any growth on your HSA dollars is not taxable. Now let me explain. I want you to pretend that the word savings is actually investment. Look at your health savings account as a health investment account because you can place the dollars in your HSA into actual investments and allow them to grow over the next 10, 20, or 30 years that you have this account. And that growth from the investing is not taxable if you pull those dollars out for qualified medical expenses. And this is actually one of the four HSA hacks that I'll get to in about 20 seconds, but this wraps up the triple tax advantage nature of the HSA. Tax-free going in, tax-free growth and investments, tax-free withdrawal for qualified medical expenses. Okay, if you have an HSA, here are the four hacks that you can do to put your HSA on absolute steroids to leverage these huge tax advantages and get insane benefits from your HSA. Number one, we touched on it, now let's dive into it. Invest your HSA dollars. So many people don't know that they can invest these dollars, and then so many other people do know that they can invest them, they just don't do it. Sure, you can just leave your HSA dollars sitting in the account, but your dollars are supposed to work for you. Most HSA administrators, this is the company holding the dollars like Health Equity, HSA Bank, Optum, Fidelity, and there are a lot of others, have some form of less than 1% interest on your money, but that isn't gonna come close with keeping up with inflation, which means that those dollars that are just sitting there are losing purchasing power for you over time. Your HSA administrator will have investment options for you where you can pick funds based on your risk profile and the time that you have to wait, and then you can invest your HSA dollars to grow over time. What difference does that make? Well, check this out. On the left, we have Eric the Saver. He maxes out his family HSA contributions each and every year starting in 2024, and this continues for 30 years. He didn't know that he could invest his HSA money, so he just leaves it in the savings account. And for this example, let's assume Eric and his family never have any health expenses for 30 years. After 30 years, his HSA balance is right around $370,000. And let's take a moment to acknowledge how great that really is. Now on the right, we have Eric's alternate universe self, Eric the Investor. He watches this video where Eric the Savior did not. And after watching this video, Eric the Investor made the same contributions over 30 years, but he invested these dollars instead of having them sit there in a savings account getting next to no interest. We're gonna give him an average of 7% growth over that time and after 30 years, Eric the Investor's HSA has about $900,000 in it. That's $530,000 more than Eric the Saver. And fun fact, once you hit 55 years old, you can actually contribute $1,000 more per year than the annual max. These are called catch-up contributions. And the big numbers that I just gave don't include the additional $1,000 per year plus that money's growth. Now, okay, admittedly, this example has some problems. How could anyone in their right mind assume that a family isn't going to have any healthcare expenses over 30 years? Well, this is where HSA hack number two comes in. The second HSA hack is do not use your HSA dollars for medical expenses. Now, I know this sounds like pure craziness, but there is logic behind this. Looking at the alternate universe Eric's again, we now build in $2,000 per year of medical expenses for the families of both Eric's. After 30 years, Eric the Savior's HSA is $60,000 lighter than before, and now he only has $310,000, which again, let's be honest, this is still absolutely awesome. However,
However, there's a huge missed opportunity. Eric the investor has the same scenario. However, Eric the investor approaches this differently. When he gets a qualified bill, like the $2,000 he had to pay for his daughter's braces, instead of using his HSA, he keeps that $2,000 invested in the HSA and pays for the braces out of pocket, leaving the HSA dollars alone to grow. Looking at just those $2,000, let's pretend that that was the first year in 2024, invested with an average return of 7% over 30 years, and that $2,000 turns into over $15,000. And by not using the HSA for these expenses and continuing to max his HSA contributions over 30 years, Eric the investor again has $900,000 in his HSA. But things get even more interesting with hack number three. Before I get into hack number three, I have to say something important. If you do not have money to pay for medical expenses out of pocket and you must use your HSA, do it. There is a difference between theoretical, optimized examples and real life. Bad years happen, we lose jobs, or we go through tough times, and just coming up with these dollars may not be realistic. Practically, for me personally, I maintain a balance of cash in my HSA around $3,000 and I invest the rest just in case something crazy happens. I know I'm leaving potential growth to disappear, but I'm okay with that. You can set up your own safeguards around what will make the most sense for you, but the more you can invest, the more potential that money will work for you over time. Okay, hack number three feels like it's absolutely cheating, but it is real, and here it is. You can reimburse yourself for past medical expenses using your HSA. And I'm not talking about something that you paid for a medical bill last week that you need to reimburse yourself. I'm saying you can reimburse yourself for any medical expense that happened while you had your HSA. So piggybacking off of hack number two, Eric the investor paid $2,000 per year or $60,000 over 30 years out of pocket so that he could let his HSA grow to $900,000. Guess what Eric the investor can do now that he's say 65 years old and his HSA balance is enormous. He can reimburse himself for all of those $60,000 worth of expenses over the past 30 years tax free. And even after all of that reimbursement, he still has $840,000 in his HSA compared to the $310,000 that Eric the Saver has. That's over half a million dollar improvement over Eric the Saver. See what I mean when I said that you can feel like the rich who pay less in taxes? Now you will need to properly document these payments over time with these receipts, but that's a significant difference in your wealth moving into the future. Now I've talked about qualified medical expenses and I need to define this to help us with hack number four. The list of qualified medical expenses is massive, but it is not unlimited. Some that I found interesting are an air conditioner with a letter of medical necessity, a swimming pool with a letter of medical necessity, and doth piercings with a letter of medical necessity. Doth piercings are when they pierce that part of the ear to relieve headaches. Had no clue it was pronounced doth and there's a whole story there, but that is not for this video. I have a link in the description where you can browse different things that count as qualified medical expenses. So check that out because if you use your HSA to pay for non-qualified expenses, like a swimming pool that is not medically necessary, you get double penalized. First, the HSA money that you used for non-qualified expenses will now become taxable income. Second, the government will also assess you a 20% penalty for using your HSA incorrectly. So if you pull out $1,000 from your HSA for non-qualified expenses, and let's say that you're in the 22% tax bracket, you will have $220 to pay in taxes plus another $200 to pay as the 20% penalty. So 42% of the value of that withdrawal now goes to taxes and penalties. Not good. So if you can help it, never use your HSA dollars for non-qualified expenses. Unless, here's hack number four. Once you make it to 65 years old, you can now use your HSA dollars for anything you want. It essentially turns into a traditional IRA account of sorts where you can pull the dollars out for whatever you need and you don't have the required minimum distributions of a traditional IRA. Now, any money that you use for non-qualified medical expenses will go towards your taxable income, but you won't be penalized on top of that. And once in retirement, there is a lot more flexibility if you've planned right to control your marginal and effective tax rates. So Eric the investor has over $500,000 more to use from 65 plus for whatever he wants with decent tax controls around his income. Since we're talking about age 65, that means Medicare eligibility, and the one downside to HSAs is that they do not play nice with Medicare. Once you have any part of Medicare, yes, even if it's just Part A only, neither you nor your employer may continue to contribute to your HSA. We hear from people all the time who say that they were told that they can keep their HSA and their employer can keep contributing to their HSA because they just took Medicare Part A and not Part B. No, that is incorrect. Once you take any part of Medicare, HSA contributions must stop. The dollars are still yours and you can still use them, you just can't add money to your HSA. 
And this may sound simple enough, but this gets people into trouble all the time because Medicare timelines are a bit weird. For the typical Medicare beneficiary, meaning you qualify at 65, not because of an illness or disability, your Medicare Part A start date is either your 65th birthday month or they backdate the start date six months, whichever is closest. Here are three quick examples to illustrate what I mean. You go on Medicare at 65, you go on Medicare just after 65, or you go on Medicare way after 65. If you start Medicare at 65, this means that your Medicare start date, referred to as your effective date, is the first day of your 65th birthday month. There is an exception to this. If your birthday is the first of a month, your Medicare start date would be the first day of the month previous, but we're going to assume that your birthday is not the first of the month for this video. So with Medicare starting on the first day of your 65th birthday month, that means that your last HSA contribution can happen the month before your 65th birthday month. You don't have to stop contributions six months before your 65th birthday. Make those contributions all the way up through the month before your 65th birthday month. If you go on Medicare at say 65 in three months, well, your part A start date will be six months back or your 65th birthday month, whichever is closest. And in this case, your 65th birthday month is closest. So your part A starts on the first day of your 65th birthday month, meaning your last HSA contribution is again, the month before your 65th birthday month. Finally, let's say that you go on Medicare at 65 and eight months or any number of months past six, your Part A start date will go back six months from when you apply for Medicare because six months back is closer than your 65th birthday month. And your last HSA contribution would be the month before six months back. So seven months before you applied for Medicare. Notice that I said when you applied for Medicare, not when you asked it to start. If you apply for Medicare in August, but you want Medicare to start in October, Part A begins six months back from when you applied in August, so in February, not six months back from when you wanted it to start in October. Now, one way that people try to cheat this is by making the full year's worth of HSA contributions just before they have to stop. So let's pretend that March is the last month that you're allowed to make HSA contributions. You cannot front load your HSA. You cannot make the full year's maximum contributions in March. You're allowed to contribute a prorated amount, meaning March is the third month of 12, you can make three twelfths of the annual max HSA contribution amount. If you're above 55, again, you have $1,000 thrown in there for those catch-up contributions. Now, we are Medicare nerds, which is why we're spending so much time on this part. So many people going on Medicare past 65, say 67, because they are still working, either don't know about this, they've forgotten about it, or they aren't planning their retirement six months out, so they weren't able to stop those contributions in time. And when it comes time for them to apply for Medicare, that six month look back takes them by surprise. Don't let that happen to you. Once on Medicare, you can use your HSA dollars for pretty much everything related to those Medicare plans, including reimbursing yourself for Part B premiums, paying deductibles, co-pays, co-insurance, drug plan premiums, dental, vision, and a bunch of other stuff. The one thing that you can't use HSA dollars is for paying for Medicare supplement plan premiums, which is a major bummer and something that I wish wasn't the case, but it is. Now that you are an expert on HSAs, hopefully you can apply some of the tips that we've covered in this video to fully access that account's power for you and your future. If this was helpful for you, consider subscribing to the channel and be sure to check out this video right over here. I will see you over there.